World War II in Europe. We'll deal with the Pacific later because for all intents and purposes they were separate conflicts. Uh, everybody right away knew how, what to call this war and therefore the first one, World War I, because it was uh, the same enemies, basically, and a renewal of the old conflict that would finally remake Europe. Uh, now we just, we started with the fall of France, or we finished with the fall of France last time, meaning that the Vichy government was established the summer of 1940, June, and after that with the French are out of it, uh, pretty much occupied, half of France was, or a third of it was occupied by Germany, and the rest, <coughs> excuse me, France, uh, southern France was under the Vichy government and included Algeria, remember it's part of metropolitan France. So French, for all intents and purposes, are supporting the German war effort believing Hitler would have his thousand-year empire. Then the weight, of course, of Hitler's attack uh, shifted now against England. Uh, he wanted to invade England. Remember, that hadn't happened since 1066. And you can say, well, it's only a short jump, but we have a new factor this time. World War I, there were airplanes, but there was uh, Snoopy and the Red Baron. That was it. I mean, and there was no real impact on except in searching for submarines in World War I. But by 1939-40, when the war, this war started, the airplanes, <coughs> excuse me, were now approaching the ability to fly across the oceans. In fact, the United States had already built the so-called Yankee Clipper that could fly mostly the Atlantic, and then the China Clipper could do the Pacific, or at least in big jumps of several thousand miles. So uh, now Hitler unleashes his Luftwaffe. Luft is the German word for air like Lufthansa, the airlines, Luftwaffe, Waffe is force. So the Luftwaffe was, uh, there's your German word, next time you run into a tourist from Germany, say the Luftwaffe and they'll hit you or something because that's Hitler's vehicle to force Britain to surrender. We call it the Battle of Britain. It lasted during the summer of 1940. Uh, German bombers <coughs> bombing London and uh, all the cities within range along the Channel Coast down here and, and well into England, within range of these planes from Germany, <clears throat> now flying in from the Low Countries in France, <coughs> occupied by Germany. Uh, what uh, Hitler did not reckon with was uh, the fact that the British had their own force, the Royal Air Force, namely Fighter Command. That is, they had, uh, just as the 1930s were ending, developed some superb fighter planes, Spitfires and Hurricanes in particular, which uh, rose up as the Germans came across. The British had invented something else, though, that enabled them to, because it's a very short jump, uh, how would you get a warning? They're coming unless you see them. And the British had invented a wonderful little device called radar really means uh, radio uh, direction finding. In other words, you, you send, you know, radar is you send out a, a, a signal radio and anything for 100 miles away, you see it coming. So they have it and they're able to scramble, as they say, launch their fighter planes almost round the clock. These furious air battles took place. And Hitler could not invade England until he had one new factor, command of the air. Because if he tries to, he had landing craft, we were going to move across the channel from France, uh, invade England, but until they knocked out and destroyed the Royal Air Force, it couldn't happen. So the Battle of Britain, as uh, the new Prime Minister of England, Winston Churchill, got on the radio and said, you know, never has England owed so much to so few, namely the fighter pilots who defeated the Luftwaffe. They shot him out of the sky, of course, suffered heavy losses themselves, but for all intents and purposes, broke the back of the Luftwaffe for a while until they could build more planes and train more pilots. So the summer of 1940, by September, the Battle of Britain <coughs> uh, was over. Britain had won it, but that's just for the moment. That's a defensive action. What's going to happen next? Well, Hitler had to abandon his attempt to invade England by sea. Just couldn't do it without command of the air, and of course the sea and the British Navy was still intact. The battle uh, then against England, since you can't uh, destroy it, then you've got to blockade it. And this is what the Germans had tried to do in World War I, using the U-boat, meaning submarine, U-Unterwasserboot, means underwater boat, submarine, uh, 
and the Battle of the Atlantic is what Churchill named it because it took place across the entire Atlantic Ocean uh, and spilled over into other oceans of British merchant ships trying to get goods from neutral America, same as in World War I, uh, and again forming convoys, you know that word where they escort <coughs> with small warships, they escort these large concentrations of supply ships, merchant ships across the Atlantic. So the Battle of the Atlantic, which lasted most of the war from summer of 1940, really uh, until about the spring of 1944. Uh, was a, it was a touch and go, and the losses were, well, the Germans, before it was over, had lost 700 U-boats, but the Allies had lost millions and millions of tons of shipping, uh, thousands of ships, in other words. So the Battle of the Atlantic was for control of the entire Atlantic Ocean between U-boats and the supplies that were coming to England. <clears throat> With the fall of France, as Churchill named this guy Mussolini, this absurd jackal, this whipped gutter snipe. Churchill had a way with words, but Mussolini boldly, after the French were about to surrender, invaded from the south, you know, to take the south of France, and so he and Hitler allied, and so on. Uh, so uh, Mussolini is in the war now. Uh, Italy, uh, by declaring war on France in June of 1940, uh, comes in to pick up the spoils, shall we say, and now create that empire in the Mediterranean and North Africa. Uh, the, uh, in 1941, he also, uh, the next year, he also invaded the Balkans, uh, Albania and Greece, and uh, <clears throat> the Italian army was driven back by the Greeks. <laughs> I mean, you know, the great Mussolini and all this stuff. You know, and they, they were lousy. I mean, the Italians weren't in their hearts weren't in it. And the Greeks drove them back. Uh, and Churchill came on the radio and gave, gave a great speech there. But, you know, this whip jackal comes frisking up to the side of the German taiga with yelpings and all that stuff. And uh, he will be reduced to the universal scorn of history and all that stuff. Churchill had a way of putting losers down. But still... The problem was the Mediterranean now, even though it, it'll even, Hitler bailed him out, came back and conquered the Balkans. The Germans had to do that, divert troops to save Mussolini's tail. But Mussolini and the Italians, remember, they were establishing a North African Empire, Libya, all the way down to Ethiopia. So uh, the Germans having to support the Italians. Uh, what the British have over here is, of course, defense of what key place in Egypt? The Suez Canal, right. So all the supplies of the British to get to India as the Japanese come into the war in 1941. Uh, they've got to keep that supply line open. And then uh, they've got bases, all Alexandria, Egypt, Malta right here in the middle as a way station to refuel their ships and the Straits of Gibraltar. It's all British territory, the British Mediterranean fleet fighting the Italians and the Germans in the Mediterranean. So, uh, that's uh, the Mediterranean theater then takes on its own life from 1940 to 43, 